10 biggest mistakes. Well, let me consult my list here because I made a list for European travelers of the 10 biggest mistakes. Number one, not planning ahead or over planning. I think both are equally bad. Not planning ahead means if you have your heart set on seeing a particular site or museum, you should know if it's going to be open the day or two you're in that city or that, that, that town. And so you should go on the web or you should talk to somebody who knows about it or consult a guidebook and make sure it'll be open so you're not disappointed. I think the flip side of the coin is equally bad, which is over planning. You can't see all of Paris in four days, let alone one day. So don't try to do too much because you'll miss everything and you'll get exhausted. Build in downtime, particularly if you're traveling with kids because they get exhausted easily traveling and you want to have time for bouncing on the hotel room bed or if you're in a beach destination just sitting by a pool or going going down to the sand so build in town time because your adults get exhausted as well so that's sin number one and number two is that advanced planning before you go should in, should include making sure you have the right documentation and that you print out your boarding pass if, if that's possible from your airline that you have your seat assignment I mean uh, the number of families I know who who don't get their seat assignments before they go to the airport is appalling. And by the time you get to the airport, the plane's full, you know, you're going to be in 24D and your spouse is going to be in 8A and the kids are going to be in 36G and F. So do that kind of advanced planning before you go. Uh, not having copies, copies of your documents. You should have a photocopy of the opening page of your passport and keep it separate from your passport. Because if your passport goes missing, if you lose it or if it's stolen, it will facilitate your getting back into the country very easily. There was a time when you could go to any U.S. embassy and they could issue a new passport. Because of tighter security restrictions, that doesn't happen. But if you have a copy of the, your picture and the opening page of your passport, they can give you the documentation you need to return to the United States and get a new passport. So make sure you have that and keep it separate from your regular passport. Sleeping too late. I mean, you paid a lot of money to get to Europe. You're probably paying a lot of money there. And I know the time change can sometimes drag people down, but the sooner you get on the local time zone, the better. And you do that by getting up when the locals get up and getting out and seeing, seeing what you came to see. Uh, worrying about getting lost. You know, some of the best adventures I've ever had were because I took a wrong turn. Unless you're on some tight schedule to meet a plane or a train or, 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 or somebody, somebody who's waiting for you, you know what, so what if you take a wrong turn while you're driving through the countryside of Provence? So don't be afraid about getting lost. Signage uh, on roads is far superior in Europe than it, than it is in the United States. You'll find your way back. Someone speaks English along the way. They can direct you, but it wouldn't hurt to have a good map with you as well. But getting lost is, can sometimes be a virtue. Don't worry about it. Uh, always shopping. You know, the number one people, reason people travel is shopping. It always surprises me when they take polls. Uh, that we, we shop as tourists more than anything else, and that's the reason we give for traveling often. Um, I think shopping's great, and certainly bringing back a memento or a great piece of furniture even on a trip is a good reason to, to go shopping. But remember, you're in a retail environment all the time, and I would spend a little more time getting out and about and, 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 and not feeling a compulsion to buy a gift for all your loved ones. That is a real big American thing. We've got to take something back to our aunt or uncle, and uh, no, you don't. Bring it back your stories and your pictures. Speaking of pictures, taking bad pictures. I'm always appalled at folks who are trying to capture the Eiffel Tower at night with a little camera. It just can't be done. It's dark. Um, and, and then people taking pictures of their loved ones in front, of the Bucking, in front of Buckingham Palace, but they're so far away so as to get the palace in the picture that the head is missing. It's a little pinpoint somewhere in the picture. Frame your picture the way you would like it to look when you see it. If you want to take Buckingham Palace, step back and take Buckingham Palace. If you want to take a picture of your loved one, take a close-up picture of your loved one. And don't shoot into the sun. I mean, the, the common errors that photographers make come back to haunt you when you get home because you can't go back out and do it again. Now, with digital photography, we can see our pictures more often, so that's less of a problem. But again, frame the picture. Frame the picture. That is the photographer's basic rule and I think it's the most common mistake amateur photographers make, even with digital pictures they can see right on the spot. Packing too much. We all pack too much. It's a simple fact of life. Color coordinate your clothes so you can mix and match. Presume you can do some laundry along the way, or at least make allowances so you can. 
uh, fill a baggie up with detergent so you can clean socks and underwear in, in a sink in a hotel room or a hostel if you need to. Don't pack so much because packing is a really big drag when you're, or suitcase is a really big drag when you're, when you're traveling. Every pound you add to your, your trip makes it one pound harder to carry. And then finally there's uncomfortable clothes and shoes. You're going to be walking a lot, probably. Think about that when you're packing your shoes. And you want clothes that will allow you to perspire, allow you to move easily, can be packed without being wrinkled. So again, think about your packing very carefully, particularly when it comes to shoes that will affect the health of your feet and your entire mood and demeanor while you're in Europe. Those are top 10 right off the head.